Hey guys, Sean Lentz here from Appalachian DIY. Welcome back to the Foundation Repair Series. Today we're going to be going over how to properly set up a floor jack and the correct placement for them. The first thing that we need to do since I'm in a dirt floor basement is we need to level this off. We're going to add some stability with a solid concrete block and then we're just going to level it off. Now that we have a level spot for our brick, we can just set it down here. Then we're going to take our level. That's pretty good actually. Alright, so we're a little high on this side. We're just going to take our brick. Just shave away a little bit on the edges. So now that this is nice and level, this is perfect for putting our jack on with the dirt floor. If we would put the jack right on the dirt floor, it's going to push in because those flanges aren't very wide. So this gives it a nice big area to disperse the weight on. It's nice and level so it won't kick out on us. So now we need to assemble our floor jack and what it is is it's just a big long tube with a telescoping tube inside of it and the the telescoping tube on the inside has two um, holes on it and they're alternated by 90 degrees. So there one goes this way and one goes straight down through. So you can put this in um, a number of different ways. For Since we have such a low overhead, we're gonna put these holes down here with these on the bottom side. Um, if you wanted it even taller, I think it goes to like eight foot something. All you do is flip this around and come down through the top. And that just doubles your length almost. So for us, we're just going to go down through the bottom. So we slide it down through. They have two of these bolts. Press that through. Turn it 90 degrees. And just press the other one through. You don't need to make these super tight. I just finger tighten them. So now we have two base plates and they have these raised dimples. Those dimples go up, that holds it in place. So on these plates, there are four oblonged holes. And when we stick these plates down, um, you can either lag them into your bolt or your floor and you can also lag them into your beam or joist that you have. That way it gives it more stability and it eliminates the ability for this post to kick out for some unknown reason. So for the top here we have a threaded bolt uh, with a big huge um, washer. Basically that washer just sits down inside the telescoping post and then our dimpled end um, goes over like this. So uh, now we can set our beam right on top of this. We can lag up into here and we can also lag down into there. Um, if you have this set up right, this post should just stay standing by itself. That way you know now that you have your base um, perfectly level. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get another person to help me and we are gonna set our beam in here and span across these joists. Okay. <clears throat> So now we have our board, and remember we want the crown up, so we made those marks on here. So the arch goes this way, crown goes up for the most strength. Lift it up. So now that we have our beam up in place, um, we just screwed this in so it's snug so we can work a little easier. Because if not, it's kind of like a balancing act. So get it up to where it's snug so you can just kind of tap it around a little bit. 
So the next thing we need to do is we need to align these posts and make sure that they are perfectly straight. Because if you have them at an angle, what's gonna happen is, is your kick out with these jacks is gonna be greater than if they were perfectly up and down. You want that load straight down through this column. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this thing around, put a level on this side, 90 degrees on the other side, that will get us perfectly plumb. Okay, so now we are perfectly level, or, or excuse me, plumb. Uh, again, we're going to plumb it on this side and also rotate 90 degrees, that way we get this plane also. So now that this is plumbed up, what we can do is we can go ahead and start securing this post to the beam. Uh, again, we have these oblong holes up here, and the way I'm set up, we have that triple stack of three by eights, and we can go up here and catch the outside of these. If you needed a wider um, beam and you need a really heavy load, these flanges, you can turn 90 degrees and it will be able to catch four stacks of two by whatevers and then you can run them on the outside again. So that's the max that this will take is um, a quad stack. I have just a triple stack. That is gonna be enough load carrying uh, abilities for us. So all you need to do then is get an adjustable wrench on here and you can turn these things around and it will jack your floors up that way. These are rated to 38,000 pounds I believe in the lowest configuration. So we are just one hole up from there so probably around 34, 32,000 pounds just for this single floor jack. So we have a tremendous holding power here. Um, I'm not gonna lag down into the floor on our concrete base. Um, I think that'll just blow my block apart, but we will put some lags up into here on, in these four oblong holes to help hold this in place and won't allow us to shift on us. The second thing that we're gonna do is talk about our jack placement. Uh, with this 10 foot beam right here, we are spanning five joists. And where you want your jacks is out at the very farthest end underneath your very first joist. You want it directly underneath it. That is the best position to have your jack. If you had it on one floor joist in and had it directly underneath this, what would happen is the load coming down on this outside beam with no joist under it would create a cantilever load. And that's something that you want to stay away from. You're going to end up flexing this beam, which we don't want at all costs. We want to keep this as straight as possible. And it's going to just push down on that because there's nothing supporting it out here. You have it supported underneath this second one. So we always want something out at the end of our board and we don't want any type of cantilever load. That's really important. So our first jack is right here underneath this side and over here on the other side of our beam, we have the other end of our board with a jack underneath this end also again. We don't want it on our second joist in, we want it on the farthest one out. That's gonna create the most stable support for our joist under our beam. So once you have your two outside points established, you can go ahead and start working in towards the middle. So like I said, this is a 10 foot beam on here. So what we've gone ahead and done is went to our very dead center, which is our third column in from one side, and we put a floor jack directly underneath this. So what that does for us is it splits our load in half, our span, and that greatly increases our load carrying capabilities with this beam. If you didn't have that one in the middle, you would get a little bit of a dip in deflection because there's that's a pretty good span to use. Um, we're trying to keep our spans as short as possible with allowing us the ability to be able to get in and work around it. So let's talk a little bit about why we went ahead and used the beam and tried to span as much as we could. So the first thing is cost savings. These floor jacks are $60 a pop and you can go ahead and put a floor jack underneath every single joist. The thing is that gets really expensive. So instead of using five jacks under here, we've used three. That's a cost savings of $120. Now we did have to go and make this beam ourselves, which is around $25 to $30. So for a quarter of the price, 
we can span and eliminate those many that many jacks. With spanning, it also allows us the capability of maneuvering in and out of the work area a lot easier. If you have a row of jacks there, it's going to be a really difficult to get a wheelbarrow in there to unload some of the stone and stuff. So with allowing us to span a greater distance and alleviating all the jacks that we would need, uh, it's just an ease of use for us to do. So there's a cost savings and then there's an ease of use and maneuverability around the work site. So what happens if you can't get a floor jack right underneath a joist, especially when you're in the middle? Well, on our other end of our house, we have a 12 foot beam down there and the dead center is right between two joist bays. So what we went ahead and did is put a joist or a jack right underneath the middle of our joist bay. So what that does is it evenly distributes a load between this floor joist and this one right here and it pushes up in the middle of that. So you have probably about oh, 12 inch to 10 inch span in between your floor jacks and that's going to be perfectly fine for jacking up in the middle of a floor joist. It doesn't necessarily have to be underneath one, that is the best case scenario, but if you need to you can go ahead and put one right directly in the middle of a joist bay. The only time that you must have a jack underneath a joist is out on the ends. That is extremely crucial. Remember, you want to get away from that cantilever load. So having jacks in the middle of your span in between your two ends, that's okay to have it just about anywhere, as long as you evenly split up that load and distribute the weight over the entire beam. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button, head over to Appalachian DIY because we have tons of more content coming out on our foundation repair. Thanks again, guys, and I hope to see you next time.